Hi guys, today I want to talk about preparing for a home birth in the UK specifically. Um, and the UK covers England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, um, as well as some smaller islands that surround the area. Uh, to start off, I wanted to just say basically that this is actually a really great um, place to live as far as what your rights are for maternity care. And I think a lot of people might not even realize how many rights they have. So I do want to say that first because I think that is really important to know. Because when you are researching a home birth for within the UK, um, like even if you go like directly to the NHS website, um, which is the national healthcare system that we have in this country, um, even on the NHS website, like sometimes like wording will make you think or insinuate that um, you know you can only qualify for a home birth if you fall under specific categories. Um, you know if you're what they consider to be a low risk pregnancy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and actually, you have a lot more rights than what they will make it sound like you have. Um, I'm not necessarily saying to go against what they recommend. I'm just saying be aware of that um, because you need to know what your rights are, especially because there's a lot of misinformation um, out there depending on which website you're looking on, as well as I think even there's misinformation amongst specific midwives that you speak with. I have been very lucky. I have a wonderful midwife who you know, hasn't had any issues with the fact that, you know, my husband and I have chosen not to have any scans, you know, that, you know, we're, we haven't done any of the normal testing that normally would go on throughout pregnancy with the exception of blood tests. So, um, you know, I know that there are situations where certain midwives would actually be really freaked out by that and they would try to push you to, um, you know, do things a more normal way. So a really good website that I will recommend for people to look at if you are planning to have a home birth in the United Kingdom would be aims.org.uk and I will link that um, down below in the description box um, just so you know exactly how to spell it. But basically what AIMS does is it's, well, it stands for the Association for Improvements in the Maternity Services. And what they aim to do is they're really advocates for normal birth. Um, because, you know, there is a lot about birthing these days that isn't normal, even though it is actually normal these days, but it's definitely not you know what traditionally is normal and a big thing about the AIMS website or well not the AIMS website but AIMS in general the organization is they are really big into protecting women's human rights in childbirth and you know basically you know checks and balances against the government that like we have basic human rights to our body and you know we can't be told what we have to do with it just because it's normal today. So it is a really great resource to use if you're confused about what your rights are versus what you do have to follow. So I definitely recommend looking at that website and just being very clear about, you know, what rights you do have, um, as well as if you did have any problems, um, either with your midwifery care, um, you know, anything. It, it gives you like resources about, you know, who would you send a letter to? Who would you contact to make a complaint, to make things right before you go into labor? Because obviously, you know, you don't want to feel pressure to do something you don't want to do. Um, of course, I'm, I do think that anytime you're going against what's normal, um, that you should, you know, do your own due research, make sure that you feel comfortable with the choices that you're making for yourself and that you're not, you know, like, I don't think you should just have a home birth just because you're afraid to go to hospital. Like, you should understand what it entails. I do think a home birth is just as safe as a hospital birth. Um, and actually the statistics will 
confirm that as well. But um, I just mean, you know, like make informed decisions. I'm really a big advocate of that. So yesterday I had my home visit with my midwife as well as her midwife supervisor came with her. Um, I don't know if it's normal. I don't think it's normal for the midwife supervisor to attend with the midwife. I think maybe she only brought her with her because my husband and I are having, um, you know, a bit of a different pregnancy from what they're used to seeing. So I think my midwife just felt a bit more comfortable having a superior with her to just go over everything to, I don't want to say cover her own back because that makes it sound like she's only doing it for herself. And I don't think that that's the way her mind works. Um, but just to make sure that every box was ticked correctly and that, you know, it was taken care of on her end as well as on, you know, mine and my husband's end. And just maybe even that the midwife supervisor definitely was more comfortable asking, um, you know, more detailed questioning about why we're making the choices that we were making than my midwife has been. Um, I don't mean that in like a negative way for her at all. Like I said, she's been absolutely amazing, but I think she's more always kind of like, oh no, you're allowed to make the choices you want, which I think is good. Um, but she hasn't questioned as much where the supervisor, she also seemed wonderful. She was a very nice lady. Um, but you know, she was happy to question like, well, you know, why have you made the choice not to have scans? Like, why have you done this? Not to intimidate us at all. It's more just to make sure that we have good reasoning for it. And, you know, once we explain, like, she didn't argue it in any way, shape, or form. Um, she was actually really happy with a lot of the things that we'd said. It was more just that they want to make sure that you're not doing things blindly and you understand what you're getting yourself into basically. Um, so in the home visit, they do what you call a risk assessment, which is kind of like what I just said, which is basically in the risk assessment, they just go over different kind of scenarios that might happen or, um, you know, they just try to make you think further to kind of make sure that they have an idea of where your head is regarding this home birth. Um, you know, like under what circumstances are you willing or happy to go to hospital under what circumstances, um, you know, would you rather stay at home or even just have you even considered these things? Like, are you aware that different situations might arise and like, how would the midwife handle it? So, you know, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I may or may not edit that out. I'll probably be too lazy too. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I thought the risk assessment was great because on my end, I actually have thought of all sorts of scenarios. So it was nice to have them bring up scenarios and kind of just, at least in my mind, be able to go, oh, I've already thought about that. I've already thought about that. It made me feel really good because anything that they could bring up, like I've already thought of and that makes me feel like, I'm really prepared. Like it definitely pumped up my ego in the sense that like, I'm ready for this. On the other hand though, like if they brought something up that I hadn't had thought of, I think it would still, it's still a positive thing because it's good to be, you know, made aware of things before you get put into them. So um, that's what you can expect from the home visit. That's basically all they do. They just, you know, I think they were here for maybe about an hour, I don't know. I wasn't really looking at the clock. They were here for a little while, but they weren't here for ages. Um, you know, and they just kind of chat with you. It's nothing It's nothing to be intimidated by. Um, yeah, that was basically the home visit. Um, oh, and they also just, they do like, when I say they like look over your home, they don't like actually, like, you know, they didn't go into my other rooms or anything. They just kind of in general want to make sure that there is a adequate space for you to birth in, which I mean, this space behind me, like they considered that adequate space. So they're not looking for like, you don't have to have this huge, enormous house or anything like that. Like, they just want to make sure that like, you've got an area to birth in. And then the other thing that they like to have is an area to 
write. So, you know, a table just because they have a lot of notes and stuff to take. Um, but even that, I don't think you have to have it. It's just kind of like they like to know that these things are there because it makes things easier for them. Um, and they also, at the home visit, bring over um, the birthing kit. They leave it in your home so it's there and ready to go for when you go into labor. So whoever is sent to the house to deliver your baby, depending on who's on call at the moment, um, you've already got the supplies in your home. And then they also go over a very short list of um, what they ask for you to provide. And I'll go over um, what I've set aside for the home birth um, in just a minute. So that's really it. I think the only thing extra for if you have a home birth is they will ask you to do an extra set of blood tests. Um, I think the routine blood test that they would do is around 12 weeks. Um, and then I think again around 28 weeks they did it. Um, and normally that would be it unless you had a reason for them to do more. Uh, the reason they ask you to do an extra set of blood tests for a home birth at the very end is just to make sure that your blood work is normal. Um, the, specifically they're looking for things like iron and things like that that could really make um, you know a high make you a higher risk for you know bleeding a lot after the birth or anything like that um, so they do a, a full blood panel um, but even that is like you know they can't force you to do it know what your rights are uh, I am getting the extra blood test done because I don't think that that's harmful in any way um, more than happy to have you know an extra bit of knowledge that I can go into this birth safely. So yeah, I'm gonna go over what I have set aside for the home birth in the house right now. So this is everything that I have set aside for the home birth. Um, let me get a little bit closer here. Now, this actually won't stay here. I just put this here for this video specifically. This is two old bed sheets that I'm happy to get messy as well as um, two plastic mattress um, covers that were just really cheap these are like throwaway ones um, and these will basically what I'm going to do is put a plastic sheet down and then a fitted bed sheet another plastic sheet down and another fitted bed sheet on the bed in case I wanted to labor on the bed and then even if I don't labor on the bed um, They'll be really nice just to sleep on for like the first night or two when I might be like bleeding a bit extra or have extra stuff coming out of me that's just not the nicest stuff. Um, and all of this like I'm happy to just get rid of afterwards. Um, yeah, so that will go in the bedroom by the bed ready to be made when I go into labor. Um, this is just a washing up bowl. You could use this or a bucket. This is for um, in case you throw up because that's really common, especially during transition. So this is the birthing kit that they drop off. I haven't actually gone through this at all because I'm not the one that's going to be using it. But um, it's really just full of, um, you know, kind of medical -y supplies and, you know, sanitary type things like th that's to catch the placenta. You know, they've got, you know, just medical kind of stuff, like things to, like, cut the cord and, you know, just keep things nice and clean. Um, I've got a little space heater. This is not on the list of things that you have to have. Uh, well, not even have to have, because all of these things are just things that they're asking you, you know, would because it'd be helpful for your own birth. But this is not on the list. But a little space heater is nice to have um, in the event that your baby is born and has a hard time bringing up its temperature because um, this would be one of the situations that if baby's temperature isn't coming up they would want to transfer it to hospital to um, stabilize it so you know it's nice to have something that you can try to warm the baby up without having to go to hospital um, you know it's just another sorry about that that was my finger it's just a good you know it's good to have just in case um, most babies, their temperature will stabilize just with the skin to skin and, you know, a few warm blankets put on top of the two of you. Get that cord out of the way. Get my hand out of the way. 
<laughs> okay, so this entire thing is just full of old bed sheets, old towels. These are all things that, you know, I would have thrown away normally, but, um, or well, obviously I had them anyway before I got pregnant and they hadn't been thrown away, but they're all things that should have been thrown away. Um, but now I'm happy that they weren't because I can use these to basically cover the floors, cover the couches, and you can use these to give birth, um, you know, just to keep your home clean while you're giving birth. Um, and the actual area that I plan to actively labor under, I do have this plastic, um, this is like a big fold out plastic sheet that pretty much covers the majority of my living room floor. Um, so this will go underneath one of the big bed sheets and this is where I'll labor most of the time, at least I think I will. Never know what's gonna happen during actual labor. But um, this is one of the few things I actually bought, but I didn't buy this specifically for the birth because I also bought this just for the baby to use. I think I've mentioned this in another video because um, this will be a really useful mat to have when baby's playing around, especially because I'm planning on doing elimination communication. Um, with the baby just to keep the home clean anyway. So this was actually bought specifically, um, well, not specifically for the home birth, but this is one of the few things that I've actually purchased. Everything else I'm showing for the most part, I already owned. So, you know, I didn't buy any sheets or anything for labor. I'm just using old stuff that I'm happy. Like if it gets stained or nasty or whatever, like I will throw it away, it's no big deal. Um, these are actually new towels up here, but I did not buy these. Um, these were given to me by my mother-in-law because she was, you know, she was going through her stuff and getting rid of a lot of stuff. And she had these because these were like a, I think they were a free gift with purchase or something like that at, with Avon. Like, and she's had them for years and years and years and years and years. I think like since my husband was a child and he's... 36 years old right now, almost 37. So they've just been sat around. They're really cheap towels. They weren't, you know, they're like thin. They're not amazing, but they are nice and new and I've washed them. And these ones I plan to specifically use because they want towels to use for baby after the baby's born. Um, so, you know, I would just prefer the baby to use the nice new towels as opposed to like the crappy towels that I don't even want to use on myself anymore which is why I'm happy to bleed all over them <laughs> so yeah these ones will be used on the baby um if I didn't have them I would just use one of these towels on the baby it's not that big of a deal but I'm just you know because I have them I'll use those on the baby um and they do ask you to have lots of things like this obviously you don't have to have them because this is for your the protection of your own home but, you know, that's one of the things that they say that you should have. Um, they also ask you to have a torch or a lamp with like a bendable neck so they can use it. And if, like if you're in low light, like if you prefer to burn in low light and they need to check you, there's a torch just so they can see what's going on. And I went ahead and I put some extra batteries on the side. This has batteries in it, but just in case they happen to decide that they don't want to work on that day, I've got extra batteries. Um, this is just for a massage. Um, this was not on the list. This was my, for myself. Um, it's basically just two like tennis kind of balls inside a sack, but, um, this will be really nice for any counter pressure on my back or anything like that. If I have labor pains as well as I've got a squirty bottle. It's empty right now. Cause I'm really weird about having standing water in bottles. I think it goes off and nasty, but, um, really quick to fill up with water when I go into labor. So that can just be used if I'm like getting hot and my husband can just spritz me with me and refresh me if I need it. Um, and then I've got some lavender oil just cause you know, if I want some relaxing and the smell seems like it's going to be appealing to me at the time, then I'll use it. If I feel like the smell is offensive to me, then I won't use it. Um, I may even have him add it to the water if I really seem to think that the scent helps. Um, otherwise, I can use it just on 
um, you know, like pressure points on my body or anything that'll like, you know, the heat will lift up to my um, nose. I can just put it on a cloth and sniff it, you know, just anything. I just have it to the side because it might help me relax. Um, bin bags, just to, uh, you know, collect any trash as they've, you know, they're going to have like soiled, soiled, um, what would you call this, linens and stuff, um, as well as they'll have lots of trash and stuff from their birthing kit to throw out. So just some bin bags. Um, or, sorry, they call them bin bags in the UK. In America, we'll just say trash bags, right? Um, and then the only other thing I have is a bag of snacks for um, the midwives, as well as my husband and I. The bag of snacks is kind of like a... Um, it's basically because we don't really keep snacks in the house that often. I'm not saying that we don't ever snack. We certainly do snack sometimes, but um, we don't actually just, we're not a couple that keeps them in the house all the time. Like if we want a snack, then we will generally buy a snack for that moment and eat it. Um, but it's not always available in our house, but I did want to have snacks on hand for the actual labor and delivery because um, the midwives could potentially be in your house for you know hours upon hours upon hours and if they haven't eaten I certainly want to make sure that they have energy so I did want to have snacks on hand so I've got these separate from the kitchen because I you know we're not going to be eating these because I want to make sure that we have some on hand and in addition to the snacks I will also I've planned to do some baking. Obviously, that really depends on how my early labor goes, but basically, I'm hoping I'm hoping that early labor is nice and easy because I don't want to go straight into the crazy stuff, but um yeah, so I plan to do a little bit of baking for them because it just seems like it's a nice thing to do and I probably wouldn't mind eating a cookie when I'm pregnant and sorry, not when I'm pregnant, when I'm laboring. Um as well as um I do plan to have some kind of you know more substantial like meal type food going I'm either going to chuck things into the slow cooker or you know that whatever we actually have for food wise depends a lot on what we have on hand because I do always have dinner foods on hand in the house um, but of course that also depends on how my labor goes because if I just go straight into crazy lady labor mode then I'm not going to be cooking but in the same like in the same respect like the midwives would be more than welcome to help themselves to whatever's in our pantry and make something for themselves so that's no problem um so what i basically bought to have on hand is uh, a box of tea because my husband and i do not drink caffeinated tea um we only drink herbal teas so i did buy a box of tea because it's very common in this country and if the midwives are tired I want to make sure I give them a little boost so I've got a box of tea um, this is going to be very controversial for any vegans out there but I did make the decision to go ahead and buy this is a long life milk because obviously we don't drink milk so I can't just keep it in the fridge and if I happen to go into labor in the middle of the night then you can't just pop out to a store to get milk because they'll be closed um, and this was my decision. Um, you know, I know a lot of vegans might not agree with supporting the industry, even to even if I'm not drinking it and giving it to somebody else. But in this situation, like, you know, if my midwife wants to drink milk with her tea, like, I'm not going to make her a vegan by refusing to give her milk for one day. You know, I just give them what they want make them happy. It's not even about making them happy. It's just about like in that moment, like I want them to be on top of things. Like I know how I am. Like when I drink coffee specifically, cause I'm an American, so I'm a bigger coffee drinker. When I drink coffee, like I have to have like a milk replacement in it. Like I can't drink black coffee. So if there's somebody that doesn't drink black tea, like here's your milk, take it. And I'll say like my husband, he was like, against me getting milk but he doesn't actually tell me what to do I do what I want to do so you know we're uh 
we're a great pair. <laughs> I love him very much. But I will just say, like, this was my decision. This certainly was not his decision. It's the only time I've swayed in this situation. Everything else is vegan. So I've got, um, these are just some food bars. They're gluten-free, wheat-free, egg-free, yeast-free. So they're free of pretty much all allergens. They're obviously vegan. Um, so this is just nice if somebody just wants like a kind of healthier snack um, with like just a good amount of energy in it. Um, these I've never had. I've never had those bars either before. So I don't actually know how any of this tastes because like I said, we don't we don't do a ton of snacking. So when we do snack, we tend to kind of always go back to the same things just because that's what we know. But these look good. They're basically like... In the U.S., we have these things called Teddy Grahams. This kind of reminds me of Teddy Grahams, but it's like a vegan version that's also, you know, you can see it's gluten-free, wheat-free, dairy-free, egg-free, yeast-free, soy-free, nut-free, vegan. What is it actually made of then? Ha ha ha. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a cookie snack. Um, some veg crisps. Uh, yeah, so these are just like the little bags of, you know, chips. Everybody loves chips. Um, I've got some lemonade and some black currant and cherry juice. This was just because we normally keep juice in the fridge, but the kind of juice that we normally keep in the house is like fresh juice. So sometimes we run out and I wanted to make sure that we had, you know, other drinks besides tea because normally, you know, besides what juice we might have in the fridge, otherwise, like we just pretty much drink water all day. But, um, you know, I wanted something else to offer them just in case I don't have any juice in the fridge. Um, as well as in labor, I might really want a nice sugary boost in a juice form that's really easy to digest. Um, just in case I'm not able to actually eat for energy. Because some women, some women can eat when they're in labor, like early labor. But some women are completely put off on it and it makes them quite sick. But it is actually nice to get calories in and make yourself stronger for pushing. Not stronger, but have the energy. Um, this is just kind of a lot more sugary snacks for myself. Um, that's just like I said, kind of like along with the juice. I just wanted some like really easy to digest snacks. So these... I mean, anybody can eat these, but this is really more for me than for them. Like, I even have, like, some of the gel packs that, um, sorry, these are backwards, but they're torque, they're torque gel packs, um, that you would normally use, like, if you're training, like, if you're running or something. Um, I stole these from my husband, ha ha ha, uh, because he's a big runner. So, these would just be those gels that you drink, not drink, but that you take down when you're running. Um, I thought they might be like a nice boost as well as I've got, um, these are backwards as well. Oh, here we go. These are the Vega electrolyte hydrators. So this is, um, uh, like we have coconuts normally in the refrigerator, not normally, but like lately we've had coconuts in the refrigerator, but in case I run out of coconuts, um, this would just be like a electrolyte hydrator that you can just mix with water to uh, replenish yourself and give yourself a little boost in energy in case I need it. I might not eat any of this stuff. Um, it's just for what ifs. Um, this is one of the baking things I did. This is basically a bunch of ingredients to make chocolate cupcakes. Um, and I've just kind of pre-measured everything out so I only have to measure out the liquid ingredients when I do it. And I've also prepared some cookies. I basically made the mix. I did the balls and I've just frozen them. So they're waiting in the freezer. So all I have to do with the cookies is put them on a baking tray and stick them in the oven. So that is everything that I've done. Um, and this was all like kind of optional stuff as well. Like, you know, you don't have to do this for the midwives. There's very little that they ask you to have. Um, yeah, so that's everything I've done to prepare for my home birth. It's actually, it's not really that much. It kind of seems like a lot, but like, this is what you really need, and this they supply for free. Otherwise, you just need sheets, towels. Uh, they did ask for you to have the torch, and obviously, you'll want trash bags, but most people have trash bags around anyway. Um, and something to throw up in. 
So <laughs> there's not much. Um, you know, it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. So that's everything. So that is everything. I just thought I would pop the camera back around to say goodbye. And I hope this was helpful for, you know, anyone who is considering a home birth in the UK. So you could just know what to expect and what would be expected of you. Um, everybody have a good day. Thank you. Bye.